We're now going to compare the two most common methods of fermentation in eukaryotes, which are lactic acid fermentation and alcohol fermentation. And some, some things to keep in mind when we're talking about fermentation in general are when you do it and why you do it. And so fermentation is very wasteful. It's not an efficient process. We're going to end up wasting most of the energy that's available within the molecules we're working with. But its advantage is it doesn't require oxygen. So you're not going to do fermentation when oxygen is available because you'd be wasting a whole bunch of energy that would have been available inside of the molecules. We're really only going to do fermentation when oxygen is not available. And so as we go through these processes, we're trying to get some ATP, but we also got to deal with some of the molecules that we're making that can actually hurt us when we're under these oxygen reduced or where oxygen is absent sort of environments. So we're going to start with lactic acid fermentation. And because this is something that eukaryotic cells that typically could be aerobic would do, we're starting with all the same molecules and we're going to go through a lot of the same processes that we would with normal oxygen present full aerobic respiration. So we start with glucose and I'm drawing six little circles here to indicate the carbons inside of our glucose molecule and we're going to break it down the same way that we would if we were going to go through regular old glycolysis citric acid and everything like that which means in the first step we take glucose we bind ATP to it and we're going to cause it to break apart and when it does that, we're going to get two molecules of pyruvate. And remember, pyruvate has got three carbons, and it's basically just that glucose molecule, but it's been broken in half. But when we break the bond over here between carbon number three and carbon number four, that's going to allow us to create two molecules of ATP. And also, it's going to liberate the electrons that used to be within that bond. They're going to become available for us to do something else with. And so as well as the ATP, we're all also going to get two molecules of NADH. Remember, NADH is our molecule that is carrying our high energy electrons for us because we don't want them to become free radicals inside of the cell. So NADH can't be used right now. It's carrying those electrons, whereas the ATP can. And this is really the only point where we're going to get something useful during this whole process is we're going to get two molecules of ATP. The next steps we're going to describe are going to be to basically stabilize this pyruvate, turn it into a molecule that's more stable, and also to essentially bury these electrons that we just got back within that sugar molecule so that they can't go out and hurt us inside of the cell. And when I say hurt us, the things that could happen is this NADH could find the protein complex that is within the electron transport chain and load those things onto the electron transport chain, but there wouldn't be an oxygen there to accept the electron at the end, and it would end up with the free radical, which again is harmful. And so we want to take the electrons off of this NADH and put them right back into this pyruvate. And so that's really what we're going to do. We're going to kind of convert our pyruvate into something called lactate. Lactate has got three carbons, just like pyruvate did. And the only difference between pyruvate and lactate is that we went over here with our NADH and we dropped off those electrons that we used to be carrying and we put them inside of the pyruvate molecule. And when we do that, it's going to change the configuration of the bonds, which is going to produce this molecule of lactate, which again is also a sugar, also has three carbons. But now that the electrons are gone from our NADH, it's going to convert back to the molecule it used to be in this oxidized form, which is just NADH and some hydrogen ions. And these guys will just hang around until there's another glucose that needs to go through fermentation and they're going to grab their electrons as well. So our byproducts of lactic acid fermentation are going to be this lactate, which will become lactic acids and some other precursors within the body, um, which is, is not harmful. And we've gotten rid of our electrons. And so our only byproducts are going to be these lactate molecules in lactic acid fermentation. The next one is alcohol fermentation. So with alcohol fermentation, we start with the same thing. We've got our glucose six carbons, six carbon glucose. And just like before, we're gonna start to go through the steps as though we were gonna go through glycolysis. We're gonna create our two molecules of pyruvate. During that process, we're going to be able to create two molecules of ATP. And in both of these steps, this two ATP, that is really our only payout from the entire process, and we're also going to create two molecules of NADH. And just as before, 
NADH, which really is a really valuable molecule, if we put it in the citric acid cycle, we can, <clears throat> sorry, in the electron transport chain, we can get ATP. But since that isn't available to us, we need to do something to get rid of these NADH. And so what's going to happen is first is the pyruvate is going to turn into a molecule called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde has the hide on it, meaning that there's an OH or hydroxyl group inside of it. But it also is this acetyl backbone. And acetyl has only got two carbons. So we went from pyruvate, which is a three-carbon molecule, to acetaldehyde, which is a two-carbon molecule, which means that during this process, we lost two of our carbons as CO2. And so two of the carbons that used to be a part of this pyruvate molecule have left, and now we've got this acetaldehyde molecule that's left over. Acetaldehyde is going to be more stable for us than pyruvate, but we still have these electrons down here in the NADH that we've got to do something with. We've got to get rid of them. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to stick them right back into the sugar, just like we did up here, but instead we're putting it inside of the acetaldehyde, not inside of the pyruvate. And so we're going to take those NADH, they're going to come drop their electrons off to put them back inside of this acetaldehyde, and we're going to end up with ethanol. Ethanol is not a sugar, ethanol is an alcohol. But it, the difference between acetaldehyde and ethanol is that the bonds have been changed to accommodate these electrons that came from this molecule of NADH. Now that the NADH has dropped off its electrons, it also is going to go back to the molecule it used to be, which is NADH and some hydrogen ions. And so the byproducts of alcohol fermentation, we're going to have two of them, unlike in lactic acid where we only had one. For alcohol fermentation, our byproducts are going to be ethanol and also CO2. And so this is what yeast will use during the process of making uh, wine or making beer. We're going to get this ethanol that is inside of the liquid. And also while beer is brewing or while wine is brewing or fermenting, um, it's going to produce carbon dioxide gas. So a bucket of, of a wort that is fermenting to become beer was going to bubble and produce carbon dioxide gas. And that's why it has the gas is because the CO2 that is bubbling off inside of like a sudsy mug of beer is the carbon that used to be inside of the sugar, the pyruvate, which used to be inside of the glucose. And so in all of these, you can see how we are able to create a little bit of ATP. Remember, we should get as much as 38 ATP. So this is very wasteful. We're only getting two instead of 36. But in an environment where we don't have any oxygen, it lets us at least get something. And so in that way, it's still useful for the cell to do um, so they can at least still get some energy when there isn't any oxygen available.